Hello and welcome to Esri Australia's step-by-step -step video tutorial on how to perform basic analyses and manipulation of your data using the perform analysis function or the perform analysis tool as seen up here. The perform analysis function on ArcGIS Online allows users to access a range of virtual tools that make analysis and measurement of geographic relationships possible. This is useful as maps are used to identify patterns and relationships, assess trends and make decisions. This is called spatial analysis. In this instructional video, you will learn how to use some of the analysis tools in order to create simple yet useful manipulations to your data in order to identify patterns and relationships, assess trends and make decisions. Before we begin, I'd like to point out that performing analyses will use your organisational credits. You can view your organization's credits by clicking on the organization tab, then the overview tab, and viewing the credits section in the top right of your screen. Administrators can manage credits in a number of ways, including allocating specific quantities of credits to each member or student. Administrators can also monitor their members' credit usage through dashboards, charts, and reports by clicking the view status button. If your organization is part of the GIS for Schools program, it will begin with 30,000 credits. If these credits are managed well, this will be a substantial amount to see you through to the end of the license term. In this video tutorial, we'll be looking at the Trace Downstream Analysis tool, which can determine the downstream flow paths from a specific input location. This analysis tool could be of use for teachers and students who are performing case studies or field surveys on local river, stream or creek systems. This analysis tool could provide insights into the effects of littering plastic waste and how litter or chemicals may find its way into waterways or storm drains before reaching rivers and oceans. In this particular training uh, exercise, you'll use this analysis tool to provide insights into the potential effects of chemicals used in farming, such as phosphorus and nitrogen, and how they may affect the Murray-Darling Basin's waterways. Before we can use this tool, we first need to look for a location. So we're going to click on the search bar and we're going to search for Mildura in Victoria. And we're going to click on that option and it's going to take us into uh, Mildura in Victoria. And the reason I've chosen this uh, area is because it sits right alongside the Murray River, which is flowing from east to west. Now we're going to add a map note and we're going to add a farm or an imaginary farm. And we're going to choose a name for it, Jack and Jill's farm. And we're going to click create, which will bring up our option to choose either a stick, uh, sorry, a point data, line data, or area data. Now, because the farm is a central single location, we're going to choose our stick point. And I'm going to click somewhere around Mildura. It doesn't need to be exactly where I put mine. You can put it somewhere close by. And again, I'm just going to reaffirm that this is Jack and Jill's farm. And I'm going to change the symbol simply to make sure it looks a little bit more like a farm. So I'm going to click on the drop down bar, select people and places, and I'm going to let it load for me. And once it loads, I'm going to choose a suitable icon. In this one, this kind of looks like a barn, and that's gonna do fine. I might make it a little bit smaller, and that's up to you. 25, and I'm going to hit close. Now we're ready to run our analysis. So we're going to click on analysis and we're going to click on find locations and right down the bottom is our trace downstream option. We're going to click on that. And we need to choose our point feature as this is the only point feature we have, Jack and Jill's farm. We know that it's right, but you can always choose from the drop down if you have multiple point features. Alternatively, you can actually also click and drag and put a point feature on the map too. And then we look at step two, trace downstream settings, and this is an optional step. For example, you could split your trace into line segments. If you knew the distance uh, that the water in the Murray River flowed each day, you may wish to break your line into segments that reflect this distance so you can measure uh, something like runoff 
over a period of time and what areas are affected at different times. We don't know that, so we're going to leave that blank for now and we're going to change our result layer name. You'll notice that a caution button has come up, which means that we probably aren't allowed to use some of these characters. For instance, I know that we can't use the apostrophe, but we're going to change the name anyway to reflect what it's going to show. And we're going to call it Jack and Jill's uh, farm runoff. And we're going to untick current map extent because we want to see the runoff past the borders of this current map extent. If we want to see how far it flows, and we're going to click Run Analysis. And Run Analysis might take a little bit of time because it is performing a function for us. So you need to be a little bit patient. And again, this is a reminder for everybody that running analysis does consume credits. So if you are demonstrating this to peers or to students, it might be best to demonstrate it as a class once before letting uh, students go off on their own. And that way you hopefully reduce the amount of errors uh, that might occur. And it should nearly be finished loading, but we'll give it a little bit longer. Um, the only other thing that I could say is that this should tell us, here we go, should tell us the path that water will take into the closest river catchment or water catchment area. So if we zone, zoom in on Jack and Jill's farm, yours might look a little bit different here. For instance, if you put it over here, it might have a different flow path to the Murray River. But we can see that on mine, uh, Jack and Jill's farm actually flows east, probably downhill towards the Murray River, where it then proceeds to show us the course that it takes all through New South Wales and if I keep scrolling out we get a true extent for it through New South Wales into South Australia and we can see Adelaide there before it runs out into Lake Alexandria and if we go a bit further we could assume that that water might eventually reach uh, the ocean as well so if we consider this, after completing this trace downstream analysis, it's clear that perhaps in the event of something like a storm or a, uh, some extreme weather event, chemicals like phosphorus and nitrogen that might have been used on Jack and Jill's farm may be carried by runoff into bodies of water that feed into the Murray River. And these chemicals, for instance, could stimulate algal growth and can increase the likelihood of blue-green algal blooms, which pose a risk to both animals and human health. Now, why is that important? Well, if we look at Jack and Jill's uh, farm positioning, we need to consider the potential problems it poses for those downstream. In this case, uh, runoff from their farm might create a number of problems or a number of impacts for a vast number of farms and communities downstream that directly rely on the Murray River, not to mention the indirect impacts it has on Australian food security. The Trace Downstream Analysis tool allows professionals, teachers, students to identify and mitigate risks of bodies of water at all levels. Thanks for listening and tuning into this video tutorial. We hope that it's been helpful.